Alright guys, how y'all doing? Uh, today we're looking at the 176 scale Churchill Bridge Layer by Airfix. Uh, and first impressions of the box are really good. It's a lovely uh, little bit of artwork there. Uh, it depicts what's presumably a, a D-Day landing scenario. There's a landing craft in the background, barrage balloons, plenty of infantry milling around. Um, I'm presuming this is sort of a secondary wave scenario because uh, you know, there's no fire being being drawn. Um, so from that particular perspective, uh, it gives a nice impression of the tank coming up the beach, um, bringing the the bridge uh, with it. Um, so there you go. That's the box. Um, sides of the box. Then you literally have your usual sort of uh, scenario there, where they tell you a little bit about the, uh, the kit itself, and then same on the other side, kind of a pre-painted sort of an example and the, uh, there's nothing on the back of the boxes no point in me showing you that but let's crack it open and have a look um, now it's a top opener, opener box which I uh, really like uh, handy from the modeling perspective you're able to uh, put your bits and pieces uh, away nice and neatly and uh, it makes it uh, just a little bit easier to uh, find stuff so let's have a look at one of the sprues here um, right so this particular uh, sprue here has some of the turret section here a lot of little wheels, bits and pieces, and uh, some of the, the side sections, and it looks like the uh, the floor, floor of the tank itself. Um, you might recognize this particular uh, sprue because it is the old Airfix Churchill uh, kit, basically, which has been uh, repurposed really for the uh, the bridge layer. They've basically just provided a sprue or two uh, with the bridge and uh, accoutrements for it. So really, that's, uh, that's what you're looking at there. Um, so there's your turret, uh, which you probably won't end up using, but it might be handy for a spare or repair. Um, so that's that. Uh, in fairness, for such an old uh, kit, it, uh, it holds up well. There's um, plenty of detail on it. I mean, look, there's lots of videos out there uh, about this particular uh, Churchill tank in its uh, original kit format. But uh, at the end of the day, it's uh, an old stalwart, and I think most of us have probably uh, have probably built one or two of these over the years. So that is uh, that section, and let's see what else we have here. Uh, here we have the sprue, which has these uh, the suspension sprockets, whatever you want to call them. Um, these uh, have to be put on individually, unfortunately. Some other Churchills out there that actually come pre kind of pre-molded into those side sections. Uh, but you look, that's what you have. So um, I've done uh, three or four of these before in the original format, and it's not a, a big deal to be honest. They go together handy enough, um, but uh, there's a little bit. Uh, it takes a bit of time, really. So all that matters there. Uh, top of the hull there, more side sections. Uh, here's your uh, your gun again. You probably won't be using this because. Uh, that uh, the, the bridge section uh, kind of goes on top there. I'll show you that piece in a moment. And that's really that. Uh, again, as I say, an old kit, but uh, holds up quite well. And as I say, I quite like it. Um, and uh, as I say, the uh, the ones I have have been knocking around for years and uh, they still look good. Um, so that's that little sprue there. Uh, we also have the uh, track lengths, uh, which are the vinyl type. Um, now I recall years ago I didn't use the full length of the track all the way around because it's kind of hidden within the housing for the track anyway um, and I think it actually gives you a better fit so what I'd probably do is trim it and kind of wrap it in behind um, the, uh, the the drive wheels or that um, but we'll uh, let you know how I get on with that uh, in the second part of the video. So that's the tracks and here we have the some of the assembly for the bridge. So this is uh, this is the part here I think which will uh, replace your turret and uh, the various uh, bits and pieces there. Um, this is obviously a new moulding, uh, quite crisp um, in fairness, but uh, you know I'm expecting very little in the line of problems here. Um, but I've said that before <laughs> when things didn't go so well. But uh, it looks pretty decent, and any reviews I've seen, uh, they seem to go together handy enough. Um, what I will say is I do need the bridge to be deployable, so uh, I'll have to see how that works out. Sometimes I take a few shortcuts in that scenario, uh, just to make it easy from a war games perspective, rather than a static model display perspective. So again, I'll let you know in the second half of the video how that went. Um, after that, then we have the kind of main section of the bridge. Um, 
as you can see there, this is the, the charts that your, your, your track vehicle will be going over and there's some central parts there as well and there's the mechanism uh, which kind of is a tilt arm sort of a thing um, so as I say we'll see how that works out but looks uh, quite and uh, quite nice and neat and uh, the detail whilst uh, not massive is uh, quite uh, acceptable um, looks quite nice. Uh, I, it is my understanding that this actually isn't this bridge isn't accurate to World War II now feel free to contradict contradict me on that but uh, I had read somewhere that uh, the World War II version um, might have been just a little bit too hard to do in uh, a kit form but uh, that may be uh, may just be kind of a hobby legend um, kind of gossip I don't know but uh, we'll see um, I'll check that out but uh, yeah looks fairly uh, fairly handy enough there that's uh, can't imagine it's going to be too big a problem, but as I say, I've opened my big mouth before and had trouble with things that I thought would be uh, be rather simple, and it turned out not to be. A um, little look at the decals there, nice and crisp. Uh, of course, they're new, so you'd expect them to be. I have this kit a oh, couple of years, um, but it's relatively new. Um, one of those ones I picked up to add to the stash, I'm only getting around to now. Uh, I'm doing a kind of a 79th armoured uh, division kind of thing for uh, the rapid fire purposes. So um, I'll probably just use these uh, these uh, decals anyway because um, I'm not too pushed about uh, decals uh, varying um, within units and that. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not a big deal to me. Um, but of course, obviously, if you wanted to match up things very specifically, you can buy these uh, aftermarket um, and do an entire unit or battalion uh, up in whatever you wish. Um, now, the instructions, plenty of instructions here. You get your usual sort of um, airfix scenario, usual warnings and so on and so forth. This is basically the... Uh, the old instructions as we uh, as we might recognize them um, yeah it's gonna be fun putting those uh, those little guys together but uh, you know as I said I've done it before and I had no issues it was just a little bit time-consuming again the track here I'll probably trim that uh, back around here on both sides and leave no track at the top because this section here will uh, will uh, hide that anyway and um, if my recollection serves me correctly uh, it just makes an easier fit anyway uh, over here then you have the uh, top section of the hull and that um, may decide to leave a driver's hatch open or the port here I'll see how that works out um, I kind of liked it to be honest but uh, we'll see how it goes um, and then of course obviously you just uh, put the two sides onto the main body and, uh, and off you go um, bridge section then uh, as I say looks handy but uh, we'll see um, I'm just kind of worried about these little parts here, uh, whether they need to be reinforced or what, uh, or how the uh, the actual thing sits on top of the whole uh, the whole assembly and how detachable and reattachable it is. As I say, from a, a deployment perspective, uh, along here, then of course, uh, this is the part here uh, that where your turret would have been, um, and then you have a few little bits and bobs there to do with the assembly here. This is kind of like uh, this goes on here, and uh, kind of the, the bridge section uh, slots on. Um, where are we here? Yeah, so there's uh, more kind of supports and bits and pieces for the roller section, which should fall forward. Uh, here's the aforementioned section. So again, um, I just have to kind of take my time and see how that works out. Check out a few reviews and. Uh, see what the story is before I put it together, see what's most practical for me. Um, doesn't look too bad now in fairness, but at the same time, as I say, I have opened my big mouth before. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how that will set up there. And then along. Uh, yeah, looks okay, your little bits and pieces. It clicks in there, and then um, this looks a little bit more intricate, so I'll have to take my time here with this. And again, the bridge, as you can see, sits down on top of this uh, section here. Uh, the idea being that it can fall forward, as depicted down there. And then uh, that's really what you have at the end of the uh, end of the day. So I'm hoping that'll go together fairly handily. Um, I'm sure it'll take a little bit of time, but at the same uh, time, I'm going to uh, give it the time it deserves and uh, try and get it kind of pretty much right. So that's the instructions. Uh, what else did we have with that? Uh, inside in the box, of course, you get your usual Airfix paraphernalia. Don't need that. Um, and then the uh, <laughs> the paint guide, which is almost a waste of time. Um, 
So basically you're painting it uh, green with a little bit of grey and a tiny bit of brown. I mean, Jesus, they could have just written a note and gone, let's just paint it green. But um, there you go, waste of a piece of paper and, uh, and ink. But hey, there you go, that's how it looks like. Um, at the end of the day, you're looking at what is it, 86, which matches in with everything I've been using anyway. Uh, again, I said it before, if I was doing this again, I'd probably use a different shade than 86. I, some of the real life uh, versions of uh, Allied Armour I've seen um, have a slightly different shade, but uh, 86 is as close as uh, I have at the minute anyway, but um, I'm going to use it because it's matching it with everything else. So 53 is sort of a rusty brown for along here, and then 53, which is the, um, it's actually an enamel colour, uh, although I'll probably use 66, I think it is, and then I'll dry brush over the uh, the whole kit with the, uh, the 53. Um, so that's it. So look, I'm going to get on with this um, over the course of the next evening or two, and you'll see the results in the second half of the video, which will be straight up. Alright guys, talk to you in a moment. Okay guys, so we're back with the uh, completed model, um, or as close as, a few little bits and pieces to add to it. Uh, I put the decals on, I just need to sort of uh, tidy up around that area a small bit and uh, kind of bring down the shading a little bit, which I did with the, uh, the 53 uh, Humbrol enamel. Uh, so basically that's the tank as you can see it and I might notice underneath here there's two pieces that aren't joining just in around there because I'm going to do a little bit of DIY uh, on that to actually kind of more fix it more permanently. I've decided that uh, I don't really want the hinge which uh, kind of is, if you can just see my finger at the edge of the picture here, um, I don't really want that in operation because from a Wargames perspective it suits me to uh, be able to deploy the bridge and actually that can be done by the simple expedient of lifting it clean off the uh, actual tank itself rather than having this, uh, this arm swing out so I just have to kind of fix in something here and I'm going to maybe just have it a little bit more stable just something that will hold the uh, base of the bridge as it sits down there although it does rest on these little, I don't know what you call them, struts or whatever it is, little, uh, platforms there but um, I just like the idea of having it a little bit more stable may or may not I'll see how it works out but I'll definitely fix up that little area inside there because I don't need the, uh, the workings of it shall we say um, but anyway the tank itself the kit itself went together relatively okay it's the uh, the old uh, Airfix Churchill as you can see uh, so fairly as I always say straightforward uh, not a bad kit nice little bit of detail on it um, and there you go, that's the uh, upper side of the hull there. Now I have to bring down that shading a small little bit, it's a little bit excessive by kind of uh, it, uh, I'll address that uh, after this video. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the decals went down fairly handily, they're uh, very straightforward little decals. You can probably see there, if that focuses, and it's probably not going to, yeah there you go, so you have that and the same on the front, and then you have the little uh, markings here. It did indicate to put them behind this uh, spare track length, length, or link, whatever you want to call it, uh, but I elected not to because uh, on the previous uh, Churchills I had, every other Churchill that I have, um, it actually stipulated to put it here, so I said uh, I just match it in with that, no harm. Um, and that was that really. So basically this is what your tank would look like in the front. Only problem I had was my own uh, issue rather than the kit itself. I normally use super glue, uh, which I was doing, uh, and everything was going along rather swimmingly. And then I ran out of super glue because I'd forgotten to go to the local shop and pick up some. Uh, and I ended up using some old Humbrol uh, cellulose cement or polystyrene, whatever it's called. And um, of course, I forgot that you have to kind of hold those together for a while before the glue actually sets. And the uh, the outside track housing sort of went on a slight angle on me, but uh, no big deal. Uh, I'm not going to worry, but as I say, it's for war game. It's not a static display model, so from that perspective, it's not going to be under very close scrutiny. Um, so that is the uh, the bridge. As I say, it goes on top of that, and then obviously the bridge would, if I had it working correctly, it would deploy like that, and this vehicle or subsequent vehicles would drive over it. As I mentioned in the first half of the video, there is some, uh, what I thought was kind of lore in the hobby, that suggests that this bridge is uh, incorrect to World War II. And in fairness, there's some partial truth to that. Uh, the actual frame of the bridge is accurate. It's actually the uh, part that the uh, vehicles drive over is different. Um, it's kind of a more lattice-like work, for want of a better term, uh, which I'm just going to presume was probably rather difficult to do uh, from a... Uh, 
sculpting perspective, um, in particularly in such a small scale. And uh, you could do it yourself. There is, um, I have seen uh, evidence out there on uh, various modeling blogs and stuff uh, of people who've done it themselves. But to be honest with you, I just didn't uh, wish to. Uh, to engage in that myself, um, but the the examples I've seen of that uh, this sort of bridge surface here um, being replaced was done quite well. So fair play to those people, but uh, I won't be doing that. Um, so that is the bridge. Um, so I did say that I would do some comparisons. Um, so here is the tank itself. Uh, here is the original Churchill. This one's about. God, I hate dating things. This is why I'd say it's about 20 years old. Needs a rework, as you can see. Um, so that'll be up for repainting uh, once I get through my stash. I'll be, uh, the stash I have in the attic of uh, kits that have to be built. I will be addressing some of the ones that need to be uh, refurbished. And that one, I don't know what happened to that, but it's uh, rather messy. Um, so, you know, that'll have to be getting a bit of a... Uh, bit of attention but a TLC so uh, that's that uh, I think that was back in the day when the craze was to rub chalk over things and give it a that kind of an appearance I don't know um, yeah anyway but it's nice to have them I mean that the tank the model itself structurally is absolutely fine and it's uh, seen plenty of combat so from that perspective I can't fault the kit now that is basically the exact same tank uh, as the one used in the uh, bridge layer uh, set because it's the, the airfix one and they just use the the hull basically and get rid of the turret uh, even though they provide it in the kit itself uh, and obviously you have these various workings here that uh, are uh, replaced uh, replace the, uh, the turret and that's really it um, so from that perspective that's the uh, the basic model that the uh, the, the, the bridge layer is uh, built upon. Um, now I just put the Churchill one or the Airfix original Churchill back here a little bit. Uh, so obviously size-wise they're identical, no difference at all. Um, now from another comparison here is you may have seen my video on the uh, Matchbox uh, Avery or AVRE Assault Vehicle Royal Engineers uh, Churchill, which was uh, one of these. And I'm just going to elevate myself here a small little bit. So this is in uh, 176, as is the uh, the uh, Airfix one. However, there is a marginal difference in width, uh, which I think is just about noticeable there. Maybe you guys can see that. Uh, the Airfix one looks a little chunkier uh, in that sense. But they match in quite well. I couldn't fault it, really, to be fair. Um, if I just take that one out and substitute this, just... Uh, might give you a clearer indication as to what I'm talking about, just trying to line them up. So yeah, it just seems a little bit uh, a little bit wider here, millimetre or two in this area, that's about it. But again, no big deal whatsoever, I mean they, they work away fine. Um, so that's that. Uh, put him back in there just for comparison's sake. Well, I'll leave that off for a moment. Uh, the other, only other Churchill I have is the Eskier, Eskier, again that pronunciation argument, uh, which is the AMRCR Churchill, uh, which is a mine roller, because um, as I say, this is all for kind of a 79 armoured uh, division project I'm doing for rapid fire purposes, so these guys will be uh, kind of uh, fighting together. Um, I will be getting another, uh, I think it's three Churchills I need, uh, the Airfix one that come with the... Uh, the auxiliary uh, tank uh, for um, the flamethrower version, which is known as a crocodile. So it'll basically again be this particular tank with uh, an additional trailer piece, which is going to be fine because it'll match up with all the other airfix pieces. Uh, so there you go. Now the um, Esky one is in 172. So there is a size difference in that, which I think is rather apparent here, particularly the front. Width-wise, not so much, a little bit, but uh, not a whole lot, um, to be fair. Just to put the uh, original Airfix Churchill back here. Sorry for shaking the camera on you there. Um, so yeah, lengthwise a little bit, width-wise, not a whole lot. But look, I can live with these things, and I'm sure most of you can too. But as I say, if you are uh, perturbed by these sorts of scenarios, better to know in advance. Anyway. So that is that. Um, so really, what as I say, it's uh, it's for 79th Armour Division uh, project. So these guys will be uh, in combat together. If I turn this guy around the right way now, it might might look a little bit better. So that's uh, this guy. Oops. See, this is why I want to make something a little bit more stable. 
so that when you're actually wargaming and you know maybe you've had a few beers, friends are over, that things don't get broken too easily. Uh, so you'll have those guys. You'll have uh, one of these or a couple of these that'll have the uh, the trailer, and you'll have a couple of these uh, Sherman crabs. So there'll be basically two of these and one of these. The rules in rapid fire actually state three of the, the, the crab, but because I had come across this particular kit and I wanted to make it, I just said I'd use two of the crab, one of these. Uh, and it said the rules were a little bit, um, maybe it was my own fault, but uh, it said uh, two Churchill AVREs uh, and then Churchill bridge layer. So with bridge, whatever it was. So I took that to be three tanks, but I think in retrospect it's probably two. So I'd actually built two of these lads. You might have seen the other one in my video for that, which has the crew sticking out. Uh, but now I have this as well. But I kind of wanted to make it anyway, so there you go. So that'll be kind of uh, the way my um, the 79th Armour Division will kind of uh, line up for uh, for combat. So that's basically it. That's my uh, little review on the Churchill with a little bit of comparison um, from... Uh, a size perspective on that uh, in relation to the uh, the other Churchills and um, in fairness the Churchills are a pretty cool tank and there's lots of versions of it out there so uh, it's nice to be able to uh, use the old stalwarts like the uh, the Airfix in fairness they've uh, given years of service so it's uh, you know pretty cool um, but that's basically it guys that is my rather simple little build as I say I'm not the best model paint modeler or painter in uh, YouTube them, but uh, at the end of the day, I'll put them together. I'll stick them up on YouTube. You guys can have a look and um, learn from any of my mistakes, or be inspired to get back into the hobby, or whatever it is. So basically, that's it. That is the, uh, the Churchill Bridge Layer from Airfix. Uh, lovely artwork there. Again, which I mentioned earlier, it does actually kind of depict the correct lattice work uh, on the bridge there, in fairness, in the artwork. So, top marks the artist for a little bit of research. Um, and that's it, guys. I'll be back again with a few other projects fairly soon. So, uh, if you'd like and subscribe, greatly appreciate it. Take care. Talk to you then.